let's get started. Thank you, everybody, for um, logging on and, and joining us today. It's really exciting to uh, make this first presentation, especially with our guest speaker that will be um, soon to meet Charles. We'll, we'll soon meet him and um, work through that. So uh, the Van Builder Show is something that we've put together. Uh, this is the first episode of it, and we'll be covering the process of building a van. And the topics that we'll cover today in more specific. So what we're going to do is do a couple of introductions. I'll introduce myself and the guest speaker very briefly. Uh, then we'll, um, just one second. Yeah, then we'll talk about the process with our guest speaker, Charles. He'll actually take us through how he approaches a van build. Uh, and then after we do that, there'll be some question time. If you do have questions throughout, put your thumb raise your hand or put your microphone on, ask the question. You can also use the chat. Um, cool, sorry, I'm just reading the chats as well. So you can also use the chat. I'll, um, just one second. Uh, yeah, so you've got three options to, to talk. Put your microphone on, raise your hand or use the chat function. Um, and then once we get through those questions, Jane, uh, Carl, Charles, sorry, we'll have a couple of minutes after his presentation, answer any questions if we've got time. And then after that, we'll talk a little bit about um, what we're doing, the sponsor of the show. We'll have a, um, a blatant promotional sort of special gift thing from our, from our sponsor and then open it up for questions again. And that should hopefully get us by um, pretty close to seven o'clock. So let's get on with it. Um, I'm just seeing, I've asked people unable to use a chat. Um, yeah, so sorry, Karen and everybody else. I'm just, I, I, I receive your chats uh, and I'm keeping an eye on the mute. Hopefully now it is, everybody's muted except for myself. Um, so if it doesn't send me another chat and I'll, I'll try and have a look at it. But um, uh, yeah, thanks for that, um, for letting us know that. So my name is Kevin Craft. I'm the co-founder of vanketo.co, uh, which is an online marketplace for uh, van life products. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a, after ja uh, Charles's presentation. And also of a series of interviews called Nomads Around Australia. And Nomads Around Australia, we, uh, it, we've got that on YouTube. It's available. Um, if you Google it or you can visit our website, we basically interview people who live in vans and buses from all across Australia. Um, so working on those two things, Christine has helped me, uh, is the other co-founder and is a massive part of it as well. Um, so Charles Gore today is our feature, feature presenter. Uh, he's the founder of Kickback Campers. And Charles, I'll hand it over to you um, to introduce yourself but uh, he's put together a really comprehensive process and hopefully something that you guys can really um, get some good use out of. So Charles, if you want to uh, take it away. Thanks, Kev. Thanks for the uh, introduction. So hi, everyone. I'm Charles from Kickback Campers. Um, I'm based in Sydney. Uh, originally, I'm from Wales and I've lived in Australia for the last six years. Um, basically, I started Kickback Campers because I fell in love with van life when I moved to Australia. I've been a carpenter uh, back in the UK and here, and then I was looking to start a new business. And I thought, most people say, do something that you love. So why not? I love vans and I talk about vans all the time. So why not uh, start a van conversion business? And it's been going really well ever since. Today then, we're gonna basically talk about, um, we want three main key points we're gonna talk about. We got the planning process. So before you even pick up a tool, uh, you wanna think about a lot of questions. Uh, you wanna plan your kind of layout and have a feel for what the van's gonna look like um, and even picking your van before you even get to the build. And then we're gonna go through the 10 step process of building your van. And then finally, we'll go through some common misconceptions that people make uh, whilst building the van so we can help you to not make them in the future. Yeah, good. Sorry, James, uh, Charles, I don't know why I keep calling you James. <laughs> <laughs> um, why did you, when you started, uh, why did you actually start, you know, why did you decide to focus on vans rather than traditional houses and construction? 
Um, I chose vans because, well, I love camping. Um, I've had a few vans since I was living in Australia. I've converted a few and I really like, you know, making things unique and finding creative ways for spaces and then also, you know, helping people get out there and just kind of enjoy, enjoy the van life as well, really. Yeah. And it seemed like a really good progression to move away from traditional carpentry, but still be involved in, you know, using my skills. So yeah, it was a good way. Nice one. Yeah. So before you even, yeah, before you even pick up a tool, think about uh, a few questions that you're going to be asking yourself, you know, are you going to be using the van for full-time living or a weekend away um, or for longer trips? Uh, do you want to sit inside the van? Like, are you going to need a table? Um, you're going to be working in there, eating in the van, playing games with your friends. And then are you going to be looking at either cooking inside or outside the van? Um, there's a number of questions that you can ask yourself to really kind of figure out what your needs are. So we've got some more questions to consider. Um, these will be able to view in the YouTube show afterwards and we also have an ebook that you'll be able to download so you'll be able to kind of look at all these questions so you don't have to worry about taking notes um, but you want to think about the storage you know you're taking surfboards or bikes how many of you you know is it just one or you know you could be taking two kids along with you think about your electrical needs as well so are you going to be having a fridge lights what items you're charging like your mobile phone a laptop and then also, are you going to be holding any kind of or having um, heavy electrical appliances? So blenders, coffee machines, induction cooktops. And then for your plumbing, you know, are you going to be having a simple basic setup with a manual sink and a water pump? Um, or are you going to have a, you know, outdoor shower or an indoor shower, potentially with a toilet as well? Um, and then work out kind of roughly how many litres of water you'll need needing for your trip. This will depend on, you know, how long you're going away for. So there's a lot of questions that you need to consider before potentially even purchasing the van. I know some of you probably already have a van, um, but it's good an idea to just have a, you know, go back and kind of figure out what your needs actually are. Yeah, and that's a, um, sorry if I can just interrupt there, yeah, sure. James. Um, uh, James. Charles, sorry. Um, with with uh, how many guys and girls out there actually watching this from their van? You can just give me a bit of a thumbs up if you're watching this from your van or bus or. Let me just sorry, just scroll through here. Not yet. Oh uh, yeah, there's a couple. Cool. So, um, yeah. It, it is something that, you know, hopefully um, a lot of people by the looks of are early in their, in their journey. So hopefully not in the not too distant future, you guys can be sitting in your van doing something similar. Uh, Charles, off to you again, mate. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, that's all right. Um, next, you want to kind of think about your budget. You've probably already got an idea of what you want to spend on your overall build. Um, you want to split this between... Uh, basically purchasing the van and the build itself. Generally, the van is a larger portion of the build. Most people don't spend more on the conversion than what the van is actually worth. And then think about all the questions you asked pre yourself previously and then how you can fit them into your budget. Um, you know, are you gonna be using more expensive materials or potentially cheaper materials so you can get more features into your van? Um, so budget always plays a really big role. Um, a really good way to track your budget as a spreadsheet. Um, I know not everyone really wants to use a spreadsheet, but it's a really good idea. You can also put different products in there and work out exactly how much it's going to cost overall. Um, that will hopefully save you from a bit of a shock later down the line. Yeah, and I might just interrupt again there, uh, Charles. And um, this time, talking about the cost of you know, of a van conversion. I've got a survey or a little quiz that we can uh, participate in. And let me just bring it up. Hopefully you can see that on your screen, but what do you think the average cost is to build a medium, let's say a medium sized van, like a high ace that we see? Do you think it'd be under two and a half thousand, between two and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half, 15, over 15, or you really don't know? Um, so if you can see that quiz and you've got access to um, make a choice, 
Uh, I'll give you a few seconds just to run through with that poll there. Yeah, so we can see now if I share those results, we can see what uh, people are thinking in terms of an average cost. Um, I might just let Charles have a bit of a chat around that because it's really important. So Charles, you got to have a few comments. Yes, so I would say that the majority of people are pretty right there. Um, <laughs> um, a really basic van will, you know, after you put the electrical in there, which is kind of the most expensive part of a build, really, like the one item, uh, you are probably looking closer towards between like the five to 10,000 range. Uh, so yeah, anyone kind of like in those first two or the second two, sorry, they pretty much right there. And then it, can't, it really depends then on like how expensive you want to spend on appliances or any sort of finishing touches like handles and how fancy you want to go with your with the van and all your features there. So I think most people are pretty much on track with that one, Kev. I'd agree. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. So nice one. You can continue now, mate. Okay, then. So once you've you know figured out, you know what your budget is and you've figured out what your needs are, then you can go ahead and choose your van if you haven't done so already. Uh, but basically a smaller van, for example, like a transporter or a high ace, um, they're really good for weekend away vans or, you know, sh shorter trips. And also, if you're going to be using it as a daily driver, then it's a good idea to have a smaller van, especially if you live in the city. Um, also, a smaller van, generally the build will be less expensive as well, uh, just because you need less materials. And also to purchase a smaller van uh, is generally less expensive than a larger van. And then larger vans such as Sprinters or, you know, the new LDVs or Fiat Ducatos, they suit uh, a bit more full time living. Or if you've got some really good, you know, you want some really good features um, just for your weekend away trips and they are perfect as well. So once you've got your van, then you can start planning out your layout. Um, you really want to consider where you want everything to go. Um, and it's a really good idea to draw a floor plan. Um, it doesn't have to be too complicated, especially if you're not good at drawing. Um, but I recommend using graph paper, um, just the paper with little squares on it. That makes it a little bit easier to draw the floor plan. Um, and yeah, just think about where you want everything to go. Um, maybe have a look at the specs of some as you want, uh, some of the appliances like the fridge um, that you're going to be purchasing and then include those in the layout as well. And then if you're feeling a little bit adventurous, you could turn it into a 3D model, uh, sketch up and shape a 3D also uh, provide like free 3D modeling software. So you could definitely use those if you wanted to try that out. How hard do you think it would be to uh, learn SketchUp or something? Uh, I'll go through that again, um, but it's it depends how much detail you want to go into you know if you're just making boxes uh it's definitely a lot quicker to learn than uh going into like more detailed plans um but there's a lot of free videos online youtube videos and there's even youtube videos on how to like model vans and through sketchup as well so yeah it kind of depends how much time you want to spend on it really thanks mate sweet uh, so next is like, how long do you think the conversion will take? I'll actually just move this over here so we can, everyone can see. Um, so it really depends on a few factors. You know, are you going to be working on the van full time or part time? Um, is there going to be one of you, two of you, or are you going to be getting the kids involved to help out for painting? Um, you know, there's a few things that you need to consider. And then for smaller vans, generally I've found for full time, you're looking at about one month. And then part time, so evenings, weekends, up to four months. And then larger vans, you'd be looking at two months and then up to potentially one year for a really big, you know, off grid build. So, yeah, that's um, how long a van would roughly take. It's also a good time, a good idea to just, you know, put your, uh, write kind of like a daily diary 
of what you're going to be building like every weekend or every day so you can kind of keep on track and outline roughly how long you think it will take but I can tell you now a van definitely always takes a little bit longer than what you think it does so plan that as well yeah I can I can vouch for that when we did our bus um we lived in a bus uh, a hino and I had a friend who said he would help me and that I could park it in his driveway for a month and I think we drove out about three months later so yeah it does typically take a little bit longer than you expect yeah there you go then <laughs> uh, so now we're on to the build process so here we have the 10 steps to actually building your van. So this is a 10 step, uh, 10 step process. How'd you come up with this process, Charles? Uh, I came up with a process. Uh, I've been a carpenter for you know, nearly 10 years and it's very similar to how you would build a house. So I just kind of transferred and used the same kind of logic um over into vans and i found that this is the most logical efficient way uh kind of to get it done quicker so a good way it's kind of tried and tested i use it quite a lot of times as well i use it for all all the vans that i build as well so yeah nice it's good to have a process and a bit of a structure yeah definitely it really helps you plan your van as well like when i was on about the how long it takes to convert you can definitely use this as a guideline of you know it might take you one weekend to clean it. It might take you another, you know, two weekends to lay the subfloor. So you can think about it in that way as well. So the first step is emptying and cleaning the van. When you pick your van up, you're going to want to give it a good clean. Um, if there's any seats in the van, you want to get those removed. Um, if you're also having a engineering certificate, uh, right at the end, you'll need to get your seats engineered for removal as well. Um, you can do this yourself and then an engineer can certify it off. If you're taking any seats out, then you'll have to put the bolts that were in the floor for the brackets. These need to be siliconed up or the bolts can go back in. So you need to um, make sure all those holes are filled so no kind of air gets up from underneath the van. And then if there's any rust, uh, we do we definitely want to get rid of the rust all, all of it so you know treat brush it off with a wire brush you can use a grinder and a wire brush or do it by hand and um, treat the area with a rust converter and then paint over it so yeah it makes it so you've got a like a you know a nice clean surface to work off the next step is we're going to be laying the subfloor I will just move this kind of in the middle. Uh, we're just going to be laying the subfloor. So firstly, you want to want to lay uh, battens on the floor. These can be either glued or screwed. Uh, if you screw them down, definitely get underneath the van and spray underneath where the screw holes are to stop them rusting or any moisture coming up from underneath. Um, then you want to put foam boards in between the battens. This helps with sand insulation, a bit of road noise, and then also a bit of transfer of heat and cold uh, when you're in the van coming up from the floor. And then you want to put uh, plywood on top of the battens. Um, I use 12 millimeter plywood, and then I clear coat it uh, both sides, like underneath and on the top to just give it, you know, a really good waterproof protection. Next, you want to install the roof fan and any windows. It's a good idea to do at this stage because it can be a little bit messy. And also um, for the cabling, we, for the roof fan, we want to hide that in the cladding. So we want to get that in first. And then for the windows, if you don't have any windows in your van, you know, van life's all about having a good view. So you definitely want to be able to look out the window in the morning and see the beach or the mountains. So it's a good idea to maybe put some windows in as well. So then we have the electrical and the plumbing pre-installation. This is where you want to run the cables around the van for all your appliances. So the, you know, the all the lights, switches, uh, fridges, your cable from your starter battery back to the second battery. Um, 
And then this is ideal because basically you want to make it easier by hiding all the wires behind your insulation and your cladding so they're hidden the same as what they would be in a house. For any two, for certification, so if you're going to be having any 240 volt, so that's basically a normal household socket with the three pins, that needs to be installed and certified by an electrician. Um, most insurers won't insure your van uh, without the certificate if you have 240 volt. And then for any water tanks uh, that are going underneath the van, it's a good time to install these now. So you can bring the pipes up through the floor and then build your cabinetry around them. And then for the gas, um, if you're having a gas, an LPG bottle, you'll have to install a gas box, which is basically going to have to unfortunately cut a hole in the side of your van, but it needs to be stored on the outside of the van. And then it also has to be installed and certified by a plumber as well. Same for insurance purposes. Yeah, and that, that's really important as well, especially if you've got a bigger van. Uh, with our bus, I put LPG in as well as um, 240, and I needed to get it re-engineered to change the registration. So it's insurance, safety, but also the registration if you're sort of going from, let's say, a school bus to a um, motorhome. So, but if you, if you search online, depending on what state you're in, uh, each state has slightly different rules and um, requirements. So you'll need to sort of spend a bit of time or get someone to help you work out what you need to do. But yeah, definitely need to get certified plumbing and uh, electrics. Okay, sweet. So now we're on to the uh, insulation and the framing. Um, it's a big mis misconception in Australia that you don't need to insulate your van. Um, I can tell you now from a lot of experience, it definitely helps if you insulate the van. It will definitely keep you a little bit cooler in the morning. You know, you get an extra couple of hours before the van fully heats up. And then with good ventilation, it will help the van keep cooler throughout the day. And then in the night, it will, especially in winter, will keep you warm. Um, for the insulation, there's lots of types you can use, um, but I would recommend not using a normal household insulation, especially an earth wool, um, the stuff that's like really itchy because it can be a little bit toxic. It's not nice to work with and it also holds moisture really well. So if you have condensation or mold in the van or get a leak, it's really going to take, it's not really going to dry in there. So. I've used sheep's wool insulation before. This doesn't hold moisture and it's uh, really, really good for sound deadening as well. And then for the framing, uh, it's really good to use 18 millimeter plywood uh, cut into strips. The plywood bends to a curvature of the van. Um, if you just use normal timber, then it might actually snap and break. So the plywood bends and it, you know, it makes it a lot easier and then it gives you a good fixing point for your cladding. So the cladding and the painting, um, you can do this with plywood or with uh, cladding boards, V-groove panels, lining boards. Uh, and then this is where you can kind of get creative and bring in your personal style. You know, it just, it's turned into a bit of a shell. So you can definitely um, paint it, stain it, whatever color you like, you know, if you're going for a contemporary look or a bit of a rustic look and, you know, kind of make it into your home. Next, you want to install the final flooring. Um, I like to install the flooring at this stage because I like to do the whole of the van floor, uh, just provides another waterproof layer throughout the van. And then also it's easier to do it before the cabinets in are in rather than putting the flooring in around the cabinets. That definitely will help you down the line. Uh, I, I would recommend using a hard wearing waterproof flooring. You know, it's going to be raining, you might have wet feet, you definitely want something that's going to be waterproof and long lasting as well. So we're on to the cabinet tree now. The cabinet. Uh, oops. Sorry, sorry there, Charles. Um, sorry to interrupt, mate. Um, so I've just got a question. Are the, me the measurements that you were mentioning, are they in your ebook?
And you're on mute. Sorry, I've got it. You're on mute again. Sorry, Charles. Uh, yes, the, all the all the measurements, everything that I've spoken about is on the ebook as well. Um, yeah, all the tips and some of the tips you can't see because at the bottom of the page. Um, perfect, perfect. And then I've got another question. What's the difference between tongue and groove, pine and shiplap? Uh, so the tongue and groove actually, tongue and groove will actually slot into each other. Um, usually there's like one side's a male side and one side's a female side, and then you slot the male side into the female. And then the shiplap, basically it overlaps each other. So you put one board down, it'll overlap on top of the other one, another board, and then it'll overlap on top of the other one. So I hope that's clear enough. I've got a thumbs up, so hopefully it is. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. Okay, then. So on to the cabinetry now. The cabinetry, if you're doing it yourself, is definitely going to take you the longest part of the van, especially if you haven't really, you know, the van's the first time you picked up a tool or done any sort of building. Um, you're going to have to learn, you know, watch a lot of YouTube videos or online tutorials on how to build your cabinets. Um, but once you're finished, it's definitely the most rewarding bit, I would say. Um, because it really starts to take shape and you can really see, you know, what your van is going to look like. And it's, I would also recommend using a lightweight plywood um, speak to your builder's merchant or a specialist plywood supplier for this, but it's a little bit more expensive, but it will definitely keep the whole weight of the van down. And then in the long run, you'll probably save on any fuel costs as well. So it'll definitely help because you, you'll be surprised with how many sheets of plywood could actually go into a full van build. Now we're on the final electrical and plumbing. So if you've got a electrician coming in, then call him in and then he can hook everything up for you. But if you're doing it yourself, then this is when you want to connect all the appliances, lights and switches uh, that you did, that you installed in step four. Uh, you can install the batteries, the DC to DC charger, the inverter, you know, and your fuse boxes. Uh, any internal water tanks and any sinks, taps and shower heads, things like that, you know, this all can be connected at this point because once you've got your cabinetry in, this is where you want to, you know, input all the kind of final pieces so it can come together. Um, sorry, Charles, another question, mate. Um, uh, which method of cabinet framing would you recommend? So when I build the cabinets, I just use plywood throughout the whole to make the cabinet. Um, usually I'll have a base, two sides, and then the top. Um, you can either use one sheet of plywood or just two strips to go across the top. I usually wouldn't use actual timber for the cabinets, I would just use, make essentially just like a plywood box, and then you can put a door on or drawers on, um, drawers in the middle as well. Is that helpful? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it is. I've got to thank you. So, yeah. And there we go. Oh, thank you. That's good. <laughs> okay, so now we're on step 10, which is the final touches. Um, this could, this is like the most exciting bit of the build because you're almost done. It could be after a couple of months of, you know, working hard on it. But basically, this is where you, ooh, it's gone back. There we go. This is where you want to uh, bring in your really kind of unique personal style and you can turn your van into a home. So you can be installed in, you know, whatever handles you like, whatever locks, hooks. Uh, bookshelves, plants, you know, little trinkets, paintings, anything you want to kind of make yourself jazz it up and then make it, you know, all nice and finished. Um, yeah. So basically that's all the van build done. I hope that helped the 10 set process. Maybe I'll just, um, sorry, I'm just, uh, maybe I'll just quickly ask, do we have any questions on any part of that process now that we're sort of moving on? If you do, put yourself off mute, ask or type a chat. I'll give a couple of seconds. 
So the holes under the bed, are they for airflow? And do you have any other suggestions? Uh, yes, so the holes on the platform of the bed, they are for airflow. So it's a really good idea to not have just a flat sheet of plywood for your mattress. Um, potentially you could get condensation or you could get moulds on the underneath of your mattress, which isn't very nice. So you definitely want to have some airflow going through there. So you can either have the holes or it's a good idea to have slats as well, uh, the same as you would have with a normal bed, and they just work. They work great. So, yeah, we don't want mold. So definitely create the airflow. <laughs> yeah, very very true, especially with the La Nina cycle that we're in. Um, another question: a good place to put? Where's a good place to put the panel for the switches? Okay, so a good place for the pedals for the switches is right as soon as you open the side door, because that's the main place you're going to be getting in and out of the van. Usually it goes kind of on the right hand side or on the left hand side. Um, so, so any cabinets are in the left or maybe on the wall in the right is always a good one because when you open the door, you're always going to want to switch a light on. You don't want to be reaching across anything before you get in the van. Um, and that's probably the easiest place. And that's where I always install um, all the switches. Yeah, good point. And uh, you get a thank you for that one as well. Um, I, I have another a question. question that we've got is, uh, could you elaborate on fitting and supporting water and waste tanks under the van, in like around the chassis under the floor? Yeah, so it depends on what van you do have. Uh, some vans have more space underneath. Like if you've got a sprinter, there's four different positions you can put a water tank in underneath. And basically, you just need to bracket. You can definitely buy um, brackets for underneath the, the van that will hold the water tank. There's a couple of companies. Um, there's one called um, Atlas Tanks. They do water tanks specific for vans. They come with, you can get them with fittings and then also they come with water gauges as well. So you can run those inside your van and you'll be able to see how much is water you have left in your, in your tanks. But basically you kind of like bolt a bracket underneath the van and that holds the uh, water tank in place. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Charles. Um... Oh, I have a quick question. Oh, yep, go for it. Um, the seats, the removal of the seats. My understanding is the ADA, the Australian Design Rules, will allow you to remove the seats out of your vehicle um, as long as you're using basic tools like a screwdriver or a socket set without having to get an engineering report. ARB actually does this as well. They actually remove your seats, and I don't believe they get your car re-engineered. So I didn't quite catch what you were saying about the seats, the removal of seats. Uh, so that was probably a question to me, I think, um, as I was talking about, uh, we had a bus. So I converted our, our bus that we lived in uh, and it was a school bus. So it had 46, um, it was a class as a passenger um, vehicle. So in order for it to get to be a, not a, a non passenger carrying vehicle in a motorhome, I had to actually take out the 40 odd seats that it had and then re-engineer force, you know, for the actual vehicle um, based on how many people could sleep in the bus. And the reason was because I actually changed the position of where the seats were. So um, I'm not sure how that would apply to a smaller van, but because I needed to go basically from a passenger carrying vehicle to a, an RV, I needed to get that um, all approved. Charles. Yes. Um, also, yeah, so I basically just got a van. Um, I just had an engineering certificate done on a recent van I completed. It was a VW uh, Transporter Caravelle. It was a nine-seater, it's classed as a nine-seater van. So I removed the, the seats from there. And you, if you're going from a passenger van, you will need to get a engineering 
certificate. It, de it also depends in what state you are as well. I'm in New South Wales, um, but the engineer did require me to get a certificate to show that it's basically changed from a passenger van to a motorhome. Um, it, it's slightly a little bit different in a, if it's classed as a panel van, um, if it's classed as a panel van, you kind of have a bit more leeway in having the seats uh, removed. But generally, if you are removing seats, you should kind of get them engineered. Okay, I understand a little bit more now, but if that's the case, um, I would suggest that's so that you don't need a light, light rigid driver's license for a passenger vehicle that carries more than four, uh, six people, I think it is. And you can just use a car license when we fit. Um, disabled ramps in the back and we reduce the number of seats um, we have to get it re-engineered not for the ramps but so that somebody with a normal car license can drive it okay. right thanks for, thanks for clarifying it's um yeah it's uh probably uh, uh yeah for, for me and the, the in the bus that we converted it was um due to the well, the rego is also quite a bit more expensive as a passenger carrying vehicle than it was as a motorhome, so that's why another reason. Um, excellent. So I've got a couple more questions, but we might have to move on because we do have a few more slides to go through. Um, the, anybody who I've got three questions that we haven't answered, I'll send out an email uh, to after after this with that respond replies to those. Um, but off to you again, Charles. Thanks, Kev. Um, yeah, thank you for the seating as well. It's uh, always interesting to learn a bit more. I've never worked with a um, with like a, when we put wheelchair access in before, so it's always good to learn. You know, every day is a school day. So, <laughs> um, so the five common mistakes that people make when they're building a van is an unrealistic budget. Um, but based on the <laughs> on the poll we had earlier, I think most people had a realistic budget, so that's that's spot on. Um, I think most people say maybe the timeline is the a big one as well. Uh, people think it's probably going to be a bit quicker than what it actually is, and then when you get into like the nitty gritty, it does take a little bit longer. Uh, underestimating your twelve volt needs, I would always recommend you know putting a little bit of that extra power in there. Um, you never really know, you know, it's El Nino at the moment, so you never know it's going to rain for a week straight and you're not going to be able to charge off your solar panels. Um, and you might not, you might be stuck in one spot and don't want to drive around and put your van on to charge it. So adding in a little extra power and it always gives you a little bit of buffer down the line if you want to add some, you know, electrical items in as well. Um, make sure you get enough adequate airflow. Definitely having a roof fan helps a lot. Helps a lot with condensation and mold. Um, and then a wall fan, like one of those oh, fans, um, and oh, an wow. kind of like windows well, as well. And then finally, not build into compliance. So um, make sure that you get any sort of certificates that you need. It's good to speak to your insurance provider before, because I know different insurance provider require different things, uh, but you, it's good to ask them what they need. Like for example, engineering reports, certificates, or even just photos of your build or the progress of your build and how you built it uh, might be enough. So yeah, it's a good idea to make sure you build to what your insurance is going to be. Yeah. And sorry, also, it's the regulations as well. So there's pretty strict reg regulations by each state. So depending on the state the vehicle is registered in, you need to um, definitely understand what they are. So it's, yeah, make sure you do some research there. Yeah, very true, Kev, very true there. So I hope you, you enjoyed it, uh, the presentation and found it uh, very useful. I just want to kind of reiterate the planning stage is just as important as the build stage. Uh, if you put enough planning involved, it definitely helps you down the line, stops there any shocks and will definitely help you get a more positive result from your van. Um, I hope the 10 step process helped you a lot. This is all going to be available. Sorry, I'm just moving. Can they see this? There you go. Um, so basically, we have a 
ebook that's downloadable with all the information on uh, that's been in here and then also some extra information, a few more different slides and some more tips and tricks. So if you head to my website, uh, www.kickbackcampers.com.au forward slash resources, you can download the ebook there. So any questions, but that's on you, Kev, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we'll open the floor. Thanks, thanks Charles. Um, uh, yeah, thanks, Charles, for going through that and, and presenting there your, your process for converting vans. Um, we'll have a few questions. We've got a few more minutes. So, yeah, does anybody have any questions uh, while we're waiting? I've got a few through the direct message that I can address at the moment. Um, we've got, I'll just pick out one. One. I've got a question here. Where, where can you get, um, where can you, where's the best place to find the regulations? Um, so each state has different rules. Uh, you'll need to do a Google search um, for the, I can't remember what, um, ADRs is what I is what you need to search. If anybody can help me there with what the actual term is. But if you do a Google search, regulations, it's pretty much broken down by different aspects. So you've got regulations for um, seat belts, regulations for uh, your LPG installations, regulations for what is considered to be a motorhome, um, for having doors on what, what type of doors you can have. So yeah, you, there's a bunch of different regulations that you'll need to search. There it is. Thanks, Karen. Australian design rule, um, Australian design rules, and you'll need to search for that um, online. So that's one quick question. What else do I have here? Um, is an engineering certificate expensive to get? Uh, mine I did quite a few years ago and from memory it was about $1,500, um, but they're probably a bit more than that. Maybe Charles has got a more recent idea. Uh, yeah, so an engineering certificate, it, it varies from engineer to engineer and it also varies on the size of your van. Um, if you have a bigger van, it's going to cost a little bit more. So Kev's is probably on the higher end because he had a bus, uh, just because there's more features involved and it probably takes him a little bit more time to, to go through it. But uh, quotes I've had are between 1,000 and 1,500. So yeah, around that price. Excellent. Thanks. Um, so um, what else do we have? I've got a bunch of other questions in and we're kind of running out of time. So I might answer maybe two or three more and then um, move on. Uh, so back to the top of the list, how important is the ceiling fan for a van with occasional use? Uh, I might let you answer that one, Charles. Thanks, Kev. Um, I would say a van for occasional use is you sit, I would say, recommend to still have a ceiling fan. Um, even if you're sleeping in there, you know, maybe one weekend a month or one weekend every two months, um, you're still, it's still going to trap heat in the van if you don't have anywhere to let it go. Um, it's going to get humid, it's going to create moisture and essentially create condensation and mold. So even though you're not using it that much, I'd still recommend installing one. You don't have to put in a really expensive one. There's some super cheap ones out there as well if you don't want a flash one, um, but it will definitely help. And also it'll make it cooler while you sleep. You'll notice a massive difference when you install a roof fan, just a roof fan, um, just having that fresh air in the middle of the night. Yeah, air circulation is, is key, especially in the summertime, um, you know, in addition to the moldiness issue um thanks for that charles we'll answer one more question and then all the rest thanks thanks everybody too for um all of your questions and we'll answer them uh, in an email follow in a follow-up email but let me pick out um this one here where actually i've maybe yeah uh where is a good place to source shower uh Sorry, we'll answer that one later as well. Um, best insurance companies to go through. Uh, I don't really, I, I just use NRMA, but maybe Charles, you've got a better suggestion. Uh, yeah, this kind of question pops up a lot. Um, 
when if you have your van engineered as a motorhome, it's easy. There's a lot more options to insure your van. Um, yeah, NRMA, the big insurers will in, more likely insure you then. Um, if you don't have it certified, then CIL have been recommended a few times, and I know you, I've converted vans for a few people who then had them insured through CIL. Um, I would again, yeah, like I said before, just speak to them and see what kind of information they want from you in terms of photos and things like that. So they'll be able to you know, give you insurance. Um, yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, very good. Well, yeah, as I said, we do have a few more questions. Um, and what we'll do is as well, maybe depending on, we've probably got another five minutes or so, we can hang around if uh, for another 10, 15 minutes. Uh, if you did have more questions, happy to stay online. Um, but for everybody else that wanted to get on and uh, have some tea or do their other chores, then we'll try and stick to time uh, for that one. So thanks again, Charles. There was some really great um, information there and it was really helpful. Uh, as if you do want to reach out to, um, to Charles with a few more questions, hit him up on his website, kickbackcampers.com.au. Uh, you can also uh, find him on Instagram and TikTok at, at kickbackcampers. Um, or also send him an email there on DIY questions at Kickback Campers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Make sure you get to his book and download it. I'm sure that's a really, um, that, that will be really handy for you as you embark on your journey there to, to convert your van. Uh, so if we move on, here comes the shameless promotion of uh, our other, um, our sponsor, vanketo.co. Uh, basically, Christina, my partner, and I have built this. Um, marketplace to help you know have all of our products that we need in one place so we've got batteries solar uh, equipment hatches fans mm, fly screens all different types of uh, products but we also do have some free floor plans that you can download we've got some guides and some blogs on things that might be interesting and helpful uh, as you sort of move through van life uh, we've got a newsletter that you can sign up to where we include different types of things every month and including, you know, get van life gatherings and meetups. Um, and then there's links there to our van tours. So um, check that out. We do have a shameless promotion and a discount for all turning up. Uh, we've recently developed these uh, insulated window covers at the moment. And we've got, um, we, we handmade these covers in Byron Bay here. So we've recently done them. We can do them for sprinters, um, Renault, Masters, different types of models. Um, if you if that's something you were interested in, go to vanketo.co slash shop and we can give you $30 off um, if you use the promo code van build process. There is a bit of a turnaround time. So it does take a while, a little while for four to six weeks for us to actually make these. Um, but yeah, so that's um that's our shameless promotion. If I think we've got one or two more slides and one of the questions was what else, what other shows have we got coming up? So in the Van Builder show, this is the first one. You probably noticed we've had a few little technical difficulties around the mute and the on off um, the sound. So I really apologize for that. Uh, but we are working on other topics. So what we really want to do is give you information that is useful and relevant. Um, so we're going to look at uh, creating some uh, other uh, shows around batteries, insulation, perhaps DIY furniture, remote working, um, your 12 volt setup. So whatever questions that you did have, or if there was a topic you were looking at learning a bit more about, please would really like to hear it. And we can try and get somebody on somebody um, as good as, as Charles to walk us through uh, the process. And, and so we can all learn a bit better, uh, a bit more about it. Um, so with that, we are two minutes before seven. Uh, so we can open and maybe go through some of these other questions. Anybody who uh, has to attend to other things, thank you very much for turning up. Um, you are free to go now or you're free to stay on. Uh, so we might leave uh, if anybody, uh, sorry. Yeah, so if you, if you want to leave more than, more than welcome. And I'm just going to work through this chat list now and um, go through some of these questions that we had. Hopefully I don't miss any. Uh, so Charles, I think most of these are directed towards you. Um, so 
let me ask the first one is, do you know where to get a child restraint bar installed on a sprinter? Um, so I guess before we can answer that, it's probably, Pat, um, depends on which state, probably. Um, so we might need a bit more information, but Charles, you can probably talk around your area a bit more. Um, I've actually never installed a child restraint bar, but um, I would just recommend speaking to a mechanical engineer who deals with, you know, installing and removing seats um, to see basically a nail, but they will be able to inform you of like the best place to be able to do it. Yeah, that, that's probably about the best um, place to start. Uh, search for engineers, talk to your mechanic perhaps. Um, and yeah, it is. it can sometimes be a little bit difficult to find, um, but yeah, engineers are good places to start. Uh, so another question we had was, where's a good place to source a shower shell that includes a toilet? Um, do you have any, any ideas there? Charles. So uh, a shower shell, including a toilet, Google's definitely a best one. <laughs> but but um, you can't, I found recently that you can't buy a hot, you can, I think, I can't remember the company. If you email me on the uh, email address, I'll, I'll be able to send you what it was. But I know basically there's, I think there's one company that does like a full shell um otherwise you buy like a la a dub a specific shower tray that's for a shower and a toilet and then you build a the, basically the frame and then you build the shower around that um yes yeah, so you'd have to build it like a little room um but yeah if you email me uh, with the question i'll be able to get back to you with the exactly what the company was perfect thanks charles um Another question then for you, any tips on locating battens after laying the subfloor down to screw into? That's a really, really good question. Yeah, so when you lay the subfloor, it's always a good idea to just mark out where you see the batten. So you're not going to put the subfloor down in one big sheet of plywood. It'll probably be in three or four different pieces. When you put one sheet of plywood down, it's good to mark where the batten is on the top of the sheet of plywood. And then when you stick the next piece of plywood over the top, you'll know exactly where the uh, where the batten is because you've already marked it on top of the on top of the sheet. So I hope that's clear to everyone. So when you mark it, uh, do you just mean with some texture or would you use some masking tape or any any tips there? You're on really good, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, you could use a texture or a pencil or you could use masking tape that's the same width as the baton so you know exactly how wide it is on the floor. Um, and then a good idea potentially then is once you've laid the subfloor, if you've made a mark at one end of the van and you've made a mark at the other, you could draw a line, you know, straight down where the battens are going to be and then you're going to get a nice straight line of screws. So, Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Um, perfect. So there's that one. Um, very welcome, Davo. Uh, are we shipping to Europe? Uh, so unfortunately, at least not yet. Uh, we're working on that. We've just started in Australia. So, um, but hopefully in the future, uh, we will. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody to who's attended and left the really nice comments. Really uh, appreciate that. Another question we've got, could we discuss installing a shower toilet van in future? How hard? Yeah, great, great point. Um, and let's work on that, Dave. I'll mark that down, Davo. And um, that might be an upcoming uh band builder show and yeah, um i only have an extra okay so this is a question for charles so we've got a situation ad has got uh, only 1000 kilograms to play with to remain within the tar weight um is ply the lightest material to use for sub flooring and cabinetry so that's a good question for you i think charles 
Um, yes, I would say so. So she said she's got a thousand kilos. Um, generally, if you get one of those, a, a sheet of ply is about 30 kilos. Um, if you're going to be, you know, in store roughly in a same, did you say she had a toy or highest maybe? Um, what band is she? Had? Sorry, I didn't mention <laughs> which type of vehicle. But a, a Toyota Hiace VW Transporter type van, you're probably looking at about eight sheets of plywood. So, you know, you're going to be under, you're going to be about 250 kilos, like around that weight anyway. Um, so, yeah, you're definitely going to be under the, like that thousand kilos. It's got, it, you have to put in quite a lot of stuff and you have to really use heavy, heavy materials to get over get over the, the legal way. Right, so you'd say the ply would be be okay to use, provided you don't to use too much. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, what, what about uh, any suggestions for a good video on installing a roof a window? Do you have any there at the moment? I think YouTube would probably be the best um, best place to look for installing a video. You know, there's there's, there's so much DIY stuff on YouTube um, with people installing things in their vans. Um, that's probably the best resource for a DIY, really. Yeah, yeah, that's YouTube is such a useful resource. So use it as much as you can. Um, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, it was a transporter. So yeah, the high roof, I think, is what we were talking about before. Um, yeah, thank you everybody for um, attending and, and participating. Really, really appreciate it. Um, we've got some good ideas for you know future videos and um, upcoming shows. And hopefully, uh, Charles has been an excellent host and really, really helpful. So hopefully, you can get his ebook and that helps um, you progress really quickly and get through your van build. Um, so unless we have any more questions, I might just leave it for another couple of seconds. If we don't have any other questions, then we might uh, leave leave you to your own devices and you can get busy on steps one, two, one, and maybe two of planning out your, your van build. Did you want to say anything else there, Charles? Uh, thanks very much, Kev. Uh, yeah, I hope everyone's found it useful. Um, and then my one piece of advice for kind of you know, everyone out there would just be to take your time, uh, don't really rush into anything, be patient with yourself. And always a good carpenter's trick is measure twice, cut once. Uh. <laughs> yeah, the old measure twice, cut once. All right, well, um, we might wrap it up there. And uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. Thanks for all your messages. Yeah, um, thanks, for everyone. It's, uh, thanks for everyone for attending. You've got measure 10 times cut once. So that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Bye.